Hey, what's up? Nick back with another Photoshop tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be a nice beginner friendly one and the third in a series of tutorials specifically for the DIY musician. Uh, somebody who's, you know, maybe never really used Photoshop before or just getting into it uh, just a little bit. But it really is one of those programs that if you're a musician um, is going to help you make just about everything that you need to make. Album artwork, uh, social media banners, flyers, like you name it. And um, being someone who you know, professionally does graphic design and teaches Photoshop for a living, but also been a musician since, you know, I was just a teenager. Um, it is kind of frustrating out there to try and learn how to do this stuff because there's just not a lot of stuff specifically go uh, geared towards musicians. So that's what these videos are kind of all about. And uh, in this one, we're going to take a look at how to work with album artwork templates. And this is going to be the first in a series of those. And we're going to take a look at how to create uh, what's called a jacket. And a jacket is a package that looks just like this. And it's just really simple. It's a little, kind of a little envelope or a sleeve that the CD goes inside. So it's just a front, a back cover, and the disc itself, and that's it. And, you know, it's no surprise that, you know, the CD is steadily declining. And, you know, we're probably going to see that, you know, become a format that is, isn't really used at all sometime in the next five to ten years. And as a musician, you know, you're, if you're going to be selling your stuff, this is a great package just because... It's extremely cheap, and if you order enough of them, they can really be as cheap as about 80 cents. Um, so what we're going to do is, this is not necessarily a tutorial on how to create uh, a beautiful album cover. It's more just on the technical side of things about how to work with album artwork templates, and specifically a jacket. Um, I'll be expanding on this series in the future and show you how to get into things like vinyl and digipacks and other things like that. But again, this is going to be just the jacket. Um, there's a lot of different places you can get them printed, and that's really you know, up to you. Disc Makers has been around for a really long time, and I've used them personally you know, with uh, clients and my own projects about like 50 times over the last 10 years or so. And they usually do like pretty consistent work. Um, I've only had like maybe one issue with them, and they were able to fix it. Um, so it's a great place to get printed. I would obviously also check local spots, and if you can support a local business, even better. Um, but anyways, Disc Makers website. What they do is you upload your artwork, upload your music, and once you pay, they kind of handle everything else. They print it, they press it, they wrap it in plastic, all that stuff. So if you are going to make album artwork through them, or really anywhere, and this is going to be kind of industry standard no matter where you get these printed, you're always going to be using artwork templates. And these are kind of a standardized way to create artwork so that you know when you upload it, it's going to be the right size and it's going to print perfect and just everything's going to be good. Um, on Disc Maker's website, if you ever wanted to download these templates, and there's a link to download them uh, right below in the description, or just at least a link to Disc Maker's website. There's a link here for templates. And again, we're gonna get into these in just a sec, but you can download templates for pretty much any kind of CD package. We've got digipacks, jewel cases, jackets, even vinyl and some other stuff down here. And like I said, the one we're gonna take a look at uh, today is jackets, and that would be right here. So Disc Makers, as well as most other places that do this, uh, there's another one that is uh, also quite good called Oasis, but uh, I believe they were recently bought by Disc Makers, so it's technically kind of the same company, so what, I don't know, either one works fine. Um, what you would do is you download whichever one you would want, and if we're just doing a basic jacket, it's something called the J100 right here. So you'd click Download. And then the disc is always done separately in its own template. And that's down here at the bottom. And it's a template called UD109. And when you download each one of these, they're just a small folder, only a couple megabytes. It's a pretty quick download. And I've got them right here on my desktop. And if I open up J100, which is the jacket, what I've got is basically templates in almost any format that I could want. Um, for most people, probably the one that you're going to be using is going to be j100.psd and psd is a photoshop document so that's the native file for photoshop so as we can kind of see here we've got our front cover over on the right back cover over on the left and we'll get into all these lines and what they mean in just a second and then our other folder here ud109 this is going to be for the disk and if i check this out again ud109.psd it's going to look a little bit blank if you try to preview. That's totally normal. And we're going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, so let's open up Photoshop. And uh, like I said, this isn't necessarily a tutorial about how to create beautiful album artwork and that kind of thing. Although we'll have some tutorials for that stuff coming up in the uh, near future. I'm just going to be using a photo. 
which is just an image edit that I did a little bit ago. It's uh, some VHS static that's been like slightly edited. And we're just gonna pretend that this is the picture that I'm gonna use um, for the front cover of the album. And there's a link to download this um, in the description below if you'd like to do so, or you can obviously use your own pictures. So we're gonna go into Photoshop. It's gonna open up like this, and I'm using Photoshop CC 2015. But uh, everything in this video will work just fine in versions all the way back to at least CS5, which is uh, maybe about five or six years old at this point. Um, so we want to open these up. File, open, and I'm going to go into first j100.psd. Just going to double click it. That's opened up. And then I'm going to file, open, and do the same thing. I'm going to go back to my desktop go into my CD, which is ud109.psd, right here. And I'm gonna open that up too. And Photoshop, <clears throat> sorry, if you're familiar at all, you know, just the way that web browsers work, Photoshop also works on a tab system. So right up here at the top of the program, you can switch between your jacket and also the disc. And there's a little keyboard shortcut that you might wanna get used to using, and that's just the F key. The F key cycles the screen modes in Photoshop, so you can jump into full screen mode, and that just hides the desktop, and it's a little bit cleaner, easier to work. But the problem is, when you're in full screen mode like this, you can't see the tabs, so there's a shortcut. Just Control-Tab, and Control-Tab jumps between any open Photoshop projects that you might have. So we're just going to start first on this one, the jacket, which is J100. All right, And as we can see over here on the right, We've got front cover, back cover on the left. And if you're wondering why the front cover is just a little bit taller than the back cover, it's just because when this gets printed and cut, those um, little flaps at the top and the bottom are part of the package that gets folded over and glued, and that's what holds the whole thing together. So in Photoshop, if you're completely new to the program, down here at the bottom right, we have a window called Layers, and this is basically how everything in Photoshop is built, one kind of thing at a time in a layer. They're stacked, as we can see here, there's a nice just vertical list. They're stacked, one right on top of the other, so any layer that would be at the top would be on top as it would be in real life, and any layer that's on the bottom would be at the bottom. So what I've got here is I have two layers, one called Your Artwork and one called Template Guides. And next to any layer in Photoshop, you always have a little visibility icon, which looks kind of like an eyeball. And all that that does is it just hides the layer. And if you click it again, it brings it right back. So the way that all of these artwork templates work, no matter what kind of album package you're making, is we have this layer called Template Guides. And if you're very fresh to this, you might want to double click on Template Guides and rename it something like Guides Keep on Top. Because whenever you're working on this, in order for the guide to be effective, it really needs to be the topmost layer in the project. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now, before we start bringing in any kind of pictures, let's just take a look at what these lines are, what they mean. Um, so we have a legend over here at the top left, which is helpful. That tells us, you know, just generally what these kind of are. And all you really need to know is that this pink line that's going all the way around the edge. And if you look at the legend, it's called the trim line. This line is where this thing is going to get cut. So the way a jacket is done, as you can kind of tell, is it's printed on a single sheet of paper. It's cut, folded, and glued, and it's going to get cut along the pink line. Now, in a perfect world where like cutting machines and printers and, and those kind of things actually worked perfectly 100% of the time, that is not the world we live in, um, we wouldn't need any other lines. That's all we would need. It's a pink line. That would be amazing. But I can guarantee pretty much everybody, if you're watching this, has had some sort of problem with a printer because they are just a nightmare. Um, so that's why we have these other lines, the bleed and safety. So the bleed, which is the blue line going around the edge, is just extra artwork in case there's some sort of cutting malfunction and maybe that um, cuts just a fraction of a millimeter above the pink line. And if your artwork goes out to the blue, then you won't be left with just a white strip of paper on all 500 copies of your album. Safety is the exact opposite. It's basically just, um, you know, playing it on the safe side when it comes to the placement of your text and anything that's important. So just to keep it simple, all you really need to remember is that artwork should go all the way out to the blue lines and anything important like text, you know, album titles, track lists, that kind of thing should be inside the green, all right? And as long as you do that, 
these templates, again, standardized. They're used all the time. If it looks good in the template when you upload it and, you know, go through that whole process of printing your album, you know for sure that it's going to print and it's going to, you know, at the very least, it fit perfectly inside the jacket or jewel case or really whatever you're doing. So what we're going to do now, again, this uh, tutorial is not necessarily about how to create a full album package that's going to be coming up in a future video. We're just going to take a look at how to bring in some pictures, you know, that photo that we might want to use for our front cover, how to trim it, how to make it fit perfectly within the template, and also how to just add a basic title to the front cover, and then how to save this to print. So what I've got which I showed you a second ago, is I've got this photo on my desktop that I want to use as, let's say, my front cover graphic. You could do this a couple different ways. You can drag and drop it in in the newer versions of Photoshop. That works fine. But I can also go up to, this is usually the way I do it, just out of habit, but I go to File, Place Embedded. And this is kind of like a way to import a picture that you've got on your computer into Photoshop um, the right way. And I'm just going to click Place. And then this picture has popped into uh, my template. Now, whenever you file place or drag and drop a photo into uh, Photoshop, it is already in what's called free transform mode. And that basically just means it's kind of ready to be resized or moved, that kind of thing, because you know, you're never going to drop a photo into Photoshop and it's just like perfect size, perfect placement right away. That's just like, that doesn't really happen that much. So what we're going to do with this, not that we really necessarily need to do much of anything quite yet, I am going to bring this photo just by clicking and dragging just kind of over to the right and I'm actually not really going to sweat the size or placement or any of it, anything quite yet. What we want to do next is I want to get out of free transform mode because free transform mode uh, when you are in it in Photoshop uh, kind of like everything else in the program it doesn't really function until you get out of free transform mode and you can see a lot of my menus are grayed out here but as soon as I click this check mark up here at the top there we go you notice that X disappears that was over the picture and all my menu options and stuff come back and that is a good thing. So now that we have this photo in here, the first thing that we gotta do before we really worry about trimming it and making it fit within the template is, well, we can't see the template at all and that just has to do with our layer order. So over here at the bottom right, again, this is just a really simple Photoshop project at this point, you notice how this layer called VHS static, which is our picture and whatever that is, that name will appear here in the layers window. That layer is on top of the guides. So all I wanna do is just take VHS static, and I'm just gonna drag and drop that right below, guides keep on top. And now I can see that guide is like, has come back and I can see it, which is good. And now that we actually have a picture in the background, it's pretty obvious like how this kind of guideline works. It is transparent, meaning you're going to be able to see through it and it helps you line things up. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like a glorified coloring book where basically as long as things fit within the lines, um, then your album artwork is going to print just fine. So I want to show you a little trick that I like to use when I'm working with album artwork um, of any kind, even if it's something that like, you know, I've spent a week really like hours and hours and hours on the front cover in a separate document and I brought it in and I want to make it fit. Um, it needs to fit perfectly, and just to kind of show you the dimensions, the front cover, right over here on the right, again, it needs to go out to the blue, and you don't need to do this, I'm just showing you the, uh, the dimensions of what the front cover is going to be. Top right of the blue box, down to the bottom left of that blue box right down here, and you want to make sure that the front cover Again, that dotted pink line going right down the middle is the fold, and that's going to be the difference between the back and the front cover. That's that line where those two things are separated. So that's going to be our front cover, but with our photo, obviously it's not the right size. It's maybe not the right placement or framing. Now this photo is kind of ambiguous, so it might be able to work um, in you know a couple of different sizes and framings, that kind of thing. But if it's a photo of like yourself or your band or something like that that has like a subject or a strong focal point, you want to be able to kind of move and mess around with this photo and get it framed properly in the front cover. So like I said, I'm going to show you a little trick that I love to use. It makes this workflow um, a lot easier because it's very flexible. It allows you to move the picture around and edit it after the fact while having it only display over the front cover, which is exactly what we want. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, which is right down here. Now the rectangle tool is basically, um, I just want to make a solid color rectangle. All right. This is um, this whole section of Photoshop is for the shape tool and lets you do a lot of different things, obviously all shape based. So I want to pick my rectangle tool and depending on um, you know, your Photoshop, it's possible that this thing right up here at the top called the fill, this is the color that the rectangle is going to be. And I actually don't really care about this. I just want to make sure that it's not white because my background is also white. So I'm just going to pick, um, let's just do, I don't know, a bright, ridiculous pink. Let's go for it. But again, any color is going to work just fine. So what I'm going to be doing is there's a really cool, um, super useful technique in Photoshop or function called a clipping mask. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to kind of define the borders or edges of my front cover and then only work within those borders or boundaries. So with my rectangle tool, I've got the fill set to anything but white. I'm just going to kind of do what I just did a second ago, but now that I have this tool, it's going to form a solid rectangle. So I've got my cursor and I'm going to bring that right up to the top right of my blue box for the front cover. I'm going to click and drag and we're going to make a large rectangle right over that front cover. And you should see, again, it, this is mostly if you're in newer versions of Photoshop, but there is a vertical purple line that has kind of popped up in the middle and that's telling me that this is in the center point. And that is a good thing because that's going to be right over that dotted pink line. And I'm going to release my mouse. And what I've got is just a big, giant, pink rectangle. All right. Wow. That looks beautiful. All right. Obviously, this looks pretty bad at this point, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Now, if by any chance your rectangle was the wrong size or you want to try and redo it, undoing in Photoshop is Option-Command-Z on a Mac. Or you can, of course, do it the long way and always go up to edit, step backwards. Um, another thing you may want to do is you can just resize it, like redo the dimensions of it, by getting back into free transform mode. And that is Command-T, or I believe Control-T on the PC. But that has been a little while since I've used one of those. Um, now that I'm in Command-T, free transform mode, I can make changes to my rectangle just by clicking and moving these bounding boxes that are in the corners and also on the sides. But luckily this is the perfect size, that is good. I'm gonna click my check mark to get out of free transform mode. So what I wanna do is I basically wanna put um, my photo, my front cover picture inside this rectangle. All right, and this is something that is really easy to do but it kind of, um, once you kind of you know explore the options that clipping masks let you do or that they um, you know provide for you, it's something that you can use for a lot of different things. It also looks a lot cooler and harder than it actually is. Uh, if you've ever seen um, text, for example, that looks like it's uh, you know filled with a picture or something like that, um, I think there's a cool little one here. Yeah, here we go. Godzilla. Yes. But anyways, this kind of effect right here where we've got a photo that's inside of a text, um, you know, we're not going to get into that in this video, but it's done using this exact same technique that we're going to do right now, which is clipping masks. So in my layers window, what I got to do is at the moment, my rectangle layer, which is the boundaries or kind of, you know, uh, border of my front cover is above this layer called VHS static, which is my front cover picture. And I actually need to reverse those. My rectangle needs to be underneath that VHS static or my front cover picture because I want to take this front cover photo and put it inside the rectangle and they have to be in this order in order for that to work. So now that that's the case, if I just right click on my front cover layer right here, the menu pops up and I'm just going to scroll down and I've got this option here that says create clipping mask and that's exactly what I want to do. As soon as I click that, what happens is Photoshop is basically only displaying this picture or that layer, VHS static, over the layer right underneath it, which is that rectangle or my front cover. And the cool thing about this is that if I go to my move tool right here, 
I can move, resize, and do really whatever I want to that picture, and it's only gonna display over my front cover, meaning I only need to set those boundaries once, and then I have a ton of freedom to you know, try different framing, sizes, all of that stuff, and it makes it really nice and easy. And let me, um, I'm just gonna file place. I'll bring in a picture that has maybe um, a little bit more of a subject instead of uh, just a you know, vague, ambiguous VHS static picture. Uh, let's see here, got a bunch of ridiculous wallpapers. Let's bring this in. So I file placed and I brought this picture in. And again, you notice how that layer over here, which is this picture, is above both VHS static and the rectangle. If I right click on it, create clipping mask, now that photo only displays over that front cover. And if this was the picture that I wanted to use for my front cover, I would pretty much be done. It's just onto text and that kind of stuff next. Now, the photo that you are using for your front cover, whatever that may be, you could very well do editing to it inside this document, but I would recommend doing that in a separate document, saving it and bringing it in, uh, just like we did here. And that's just, it keeps things a little bit simpler that way. And if you're new to Photoshop, it makes that workflow just a little bit simpler. Um, so like I said, you would file, open that picture separately, mess around with it, edit it, that kind of thing, save it, and then bring it in here. So next thing that we're going to do, and if I turn my guides off, I can kind of see that that's looking pretty good. The borders look great. I'm going to put in just a quick title. I'm going to do that via the type tool. Now in this tutorial, we're not going to get super in depth into the text tool or the type tool, but it's pretty straightforward if all you're doing is something like an album title. If I go up here, I can select my fonts and you know, if you have any experience with Microsoft Word or any of those uh, word processing programs, it's almost exactly the same, at least on the basic text creation level. So I'm going to pick a font here. Let's just go with uh, four square for now. And for my size, I usually like to start somewhere around 24 or 36 point. It's not going to necessarily be the perfect size, but it's going to be big enough to see, but also not so big that it would you know, be too big for my album cover. My alignment doesn't really matter because I'm only going to do one line of text for a title. And the color, text color is this box right here. And you can pick any color. But for right now, if I'm going to put a title up here in the sky, I'm just going to stick to white because I want to get some really good contrast between the background and my text. I'm just going to click. I'm going to type my title out. And then with text mode, kind of like with free transform mode, you've got all of these menu options that are grayed out. And in order to, let's say, move the text around, uh, at least easily, you want to click the check mark up here gets you out of text mode. I'm going to go to my move tool, which is at the very top of the toolbar. And the move tool just lets you click and drag and move that title around. And you can also see in the layers window down here that as soon as we clicked and made that text, we have automatically, or Photoshop has automatically made a new layer for us called album title, which that's why we're able to move it around without affecting anything else is because it's on its own separate layer. All right. So now if you wanted to kind of continue this and do it a full package, um, and again, I'm going to have a video coming up uh, in the near future that kind of goes through the whole process, front cover, back cover, and CD, you would really repeat the exact same process for the back cover. You would make another rectangle. You'd bring in the picture that you want to use for your back cover, or maybe you just want it to be a solid color, and that's possibly okay. And then set it to a clipping mask, and then all of a sudden that picture that you have on your back cover is only displaying in the back cover. Um, I found this to be a really, you know, once you get the hang of it, you know, maybe the first time you do it, it might be a little clunky, but it makes the workflow really, really simple. And, um, you know, it's just a lot easier than having to constantly be erasing or trimming up edges and, and trying all kinds of different things to find the perfect framing when this is just so much easier. So now when it comes time to save your album artwork, if you did want to get it printed, the first thing you've got to do is obviously turn the template layer off because you wouldn't want to print up 500 copies of you know something that's got a green box and a front cover on your front cover. So you're going to turn that off just like that. All right. 
Now, one thing that is important to just have a basic understanding of is um, there's something called the color mode when you're working with digital graphics. And there's two main ones that you work with, RGB and CMYK. Now you notice how CMYK is selected and that's because we're using templates taken directly from disc makers. And CMYK is the color mode that you typically use to print. And the difference is, they basically look like this. RGB is the way that color is calculated on screens, like on a phone, TV, computers, um, because it's red, green, blue. That's what the little colors inside each pixel, and they're mixing with the light that is behind the screen or off to the side, depending on the kind of screen. But when you're printing, because paper doesn't light up, at least not yet, maybe in the future, someday, um, printers use four inks, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Black just stands... Um, K stands for key, which means black. So when you're printing something, you just want to make sure that it's in this color mode so that the printer, um, you know, is able to calculate and represent colors a little bit more accurately. So we're good. We actually don't really need to do anything with that. Just you want to be sure to make sure that something is in CMYK color mode when you are printing. And of course, because nothing in life is super easy, there may be some exceptions to that. Some print shops will specifically request things in RGB, and all you need to do is just click RGB right there to switch back and forth. But disc makers in most places that do album artwork are going to want it in CMYK, and they're also going to want it in the PDF format. So if I wanted to save this as a PDF, uh, PDFs obviously, you know, they're very commonly used for a bunch of different things, but uh, they're great because they're extremely high quality, high resolution, and most places that do prints, um, artwork, business cards, flyers, you name it, are um, not necessarily going to require PDFs, but they will absolutely accept them. And again, it's a really good quality format, which you would want to use much better than something like a JPEG because that's a compressed format and the quality, you know, it looks okay, um, but not quite as good as a PDF. So I would save this as something like, you know, jacket or whatever. And then down here, I would of course always want to save it as a Photoshop file first because that's my working file. It's got all my layers. But then once I save there's a Photoshop file, I would save it again. And right down here, I pick Photoshop PDF. All right. Now you're going to have the option here to save layers and including this by this leaving this box checked directly affects file size. So basically if I deselect that, it's going to save as a smaller file size and I lose some editability, but we don't really care about that. We have our Photoshop file for editing. This is just a simple flat print file. That's it. And we want to keep the file size as small as possible just because it you know, loads faster. If it's on smaller drives, you can email it, that kind of thing. When I click save, there we go. The default settings are actually pretty good for most things. There are certain print shops that may require a very specific PDF standard. Like if you use Moo.com to print things, which is a great website, sometimes they, I believe, will want the PDF X-1A. And it's just a standards thing. So just make sure to select it. And then as soon as you click Save PDF, what you've got is a print file that you've saved. And again, perfectly trimmed and fitting within the template. As long as it looks good here, then you, know, you can rest easy. It's gonna print just fine. So what I have here on my desktop is jacket.pdf. And if I look at it, uh, one thing that you're going to notice is if you look at this PDF in a program outside of Photoshop, it's going to appear um, a little washed out, maybe um, you know, not quite as saturated and a little faded. And that's only because it's in CMYK color mode and the monitor that you're looking at is trying to display colors in RGB. So it's kind of like speaking different languages. So it's going to look kind of close. But that's totally normal. So if you see it and it looks a little faded, don't freak out. It's not ruined. It's probably okay. Um, you can always check it again by opening it in Photoshop, but that is totally normal. All right. So that is how you work with a jacket template. And we're just going to take a quick jump over to the disk here. And luckily, this works exactly the same way, so we don't have to really do um, too much new stuff here. The disk template... You notice all the exact same colors. They all mean exactly the same thing. And if you're worried at all, or at all about having to design things in a perfect circle when you're making a CD or a disc of any kind, you don't have to. Um, you notice this blue box here that says required bleed. 
your pictures are going to still be just a perfect square. The circle, um, you know, cutting actually just happens when the thing gets printed at the print shop. They take care of all of that. So as long as your picture, and we'll just do that one more time, I'm going to make a rectangle. And before I do it, I just want to make sure that my fill color is just not white. And I'm just going to draw a box right here, right over required bleed. There we go. And you could have brought the picture in first and then done this or vice versa. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go to file place embedded. I'm going to bring my picture in here. Now, of course, you might want to do a totally different thing on your disc, but it's also totally cool to just reuse the front cover graphic, whatever that might be. Cause it's a good way to just make that package feel cohesive. You know, you got, you look at the front cover of the album and you slide the disc out and they're the same picture and it just makes it feel like it just belongs. But of course doing something different that makes sense and fits is also cool. Now, if you look at my layers window, I've got my rectangle right here. VHS is right above it. This is my front cover picture. I'm just gonna right click on that layer and then select create clipping mask. And now there we go. That's perfect. Right. Again, this is exactly how you want your template to look. You would put in a title. Now, the only thing that's a little bit different about the disc is that the safety zone, of course, is not a square. It's actually donut shaped. So the safety zone on a disc is the space between this dotted green line right up here at the top. And then this dotted green line right down here at the bottom. So anywhere in between those two things is going to be safe. Uh, tech, that basically just means text will not get cut off. Now there's this solid green line here going around the middle. And all that that is, is it's showing you where the material on the actual disc itself is changing. So inside this solid color circle, um, it's still going to print, but there's going to be a little bit of a color shift. So you're going to notice that the, it just looks a little bit different in that area because it's the air, part of the CD where it switches materials on the back and that's right outside the hole in the center. Right. So that is how we work with a jacket art template, how we trim pictures up to fit within them, how we can make a basic title. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to ask me below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have a bunch more of these coming up over the next couple of weeks and months including how to make vinyl, how to make digipacks, and also how to actually design and create a full album package, meaning front cover, back cover, and the disc, and a bunch of other Photoshop stuff specifically for musicians. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hope that this was helpful and questions below. Um, and uh, thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.